27. There it is. Live stream. Got it. Okay. Good morning, all. Welcome. We're grateful to God for a new year. We thank you, Lord. We ask that this be a blessed Lord's Day, that souls will be saved, that bodies will be healed, that your name would be proclaimed. Bring blessing, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. 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 So, so in, uh, Luke, uh, Luke 6 still, and uh, we're going to be picking up verse 27. And we're going to use the uh, English Standard Version today, ESV, ESV. So um, this is uh, following uh, the Beatitudes in Luke. And um, it begins uh, verse 27. Um, I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you, and as you wish that others would do to you, so do to them. There's the golden rule in 31. Amen. Shall we continue? Or do you want to comment on that? No, you comment on it. I got, I got to go find something. You comment on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is, um, this is, uh, you know, this is a, um, a, a, certainly a sharp contrast to the uh, Old Testament um, of proportion. Uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and so forth, as um, a response to uh, a, 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 a grievous a, a grievousness that's been caused to you. Uh, here he's saying, love your enemies. Okay. Uh, certainly not a natural response. That's right. uh, our our uh, tendency is to um, strike back and to <laughs> um, retaliate. Strike back hard. hard. <clears throat> Sorry, strike back hard, and it also separates the gospel from every other religion. I mean, the separation of the gospel from every other religion is that we have a risen Savior, but uh, and who paid for our sins. But this is just so contrary to what uh, what, what what my natural instincts would be. Uh, yeah, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now that I gotta say, that's the that's the quickest remedy I use. It, it's almost fail safe uh, in its blessing back to me when I pray for somebody um, who abuses you. And certainly in this country, we have um, systems of government that um, can be down uh, have turned downright abusive toward toward many of us. And uh, to pray for them, to me, uh, is um, a great um, great sense of relief. But I, I mean it sincerely when I pray. I don't, I'm not looking for the for the relief for myself. I just so I, I enjoy it very much. But a, a, you know, a genuine prayer for somebody that is abusive, uh, I find to be a great um, remedy for Amen. for a situation all and the way the, around, all the way around. And the parallel scripture is uh, it'll be like heaping coals of fire upon them. Well, we want don't want to do that being kind thing so that we heap coals of fire upon them. I mean, that's that's like <laughs> backwards from what the gospel is. Yeah. It's just and a byproduct. Could, could that, that is figurative, too. That's not meant to be actually pouring. Right. It, you know, spiritually speaking, it's a burn, but uh, <clears throat> we're not supposed to be uh, chucking uh, charcoal briquettes at anybody. 
Yeah, it'll be like that. I hear you. But if you're if your motive is to do them harm by doing them good, then you've missed the whole point of this. Right. The point is to do good. And one of the byproducts is that they'll feel like, whoa, he's good to me and I was mean to him, you know? Yeah. Well, if they have a conscience, they'll feel like that. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, and, <clears throat> and it's really a practical solution for okay, if somebody needs this, then you give them that. And somebody needs this, then you give them that. If somebody strikes you one cheek, you turn the other. And that's brutally hard because the uh, the adrenaline rush from being struck on the cheek, it's not at all natural to say, here's my other one. Yeah. <laughs> right you now, it, it's, it's you know, we're, right now we are in a, still in an abundance period. I mean, even though things have... Uh, turned down from um, the recent past the uh, we're still in a, in a period of abundance when when things get really uh, uh, austere uh, these words really come out and and test your uh, your spiritual acumen <laughs> right uh, but uh, you know um, it's not, not to go looking for trouble so uh, it's there but the, you <laughs> yeah. know but being prepared for these these responses uh, I think one of the first things that Henry impressed me with, uh, Pastor Henry, was that uh, uh, somebody asked him for a sweater one day and he just took it off and gave it to him. I thought, there you go. There you go. Perfect. There's the man. <laughs> so as you wish others would do to you, do to them. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a really a positive sentence. Uh, how, would I, how would I deal with him how would I deal with me if I were him, you know? Uh, and you just think, what an amazing, radical, spirit-filled way that is to live a life. What would I what would I want for them? Like, and you think, and, and, and there's a whole number of annoying, angry people in our lives, and they, yeah. um, and usually if they're annoying and angry, inducing to you, they're annoying and angry inducing to their world. That's just how they cope. Um, I had a man at, at dinner one day and and he said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't complain about anything. <laughs> and I thought <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is really this is really a uh a, a, a lesson in empathy. Yeah. Empathy is the thing to see the world from somebody else's point of view and yeah. to and to actually uh, plug yourself into them and see what they what they need from their point of view and respond to it. That's right. And empathy is such a such a incredibly underrated gift. Really, because you really need to feel their pain. No, yep. like it, empathy. Empathy is one of the prime gifts of an intercessor. Yeah, what an intercessor yep. does is takes their pain of somebody else to the throne of God Almighty and pours out the their heart into the heart of God for the heart of their friend and then leaves it there because yeah. you can't be anybody's savior, but you can be somebody's intercessor. And mm -hmm. and we we uh we don't we kind of have a have a mixed uh 2023 english version of intercession we, we often think that an intercessor is a guy that kind of negotiates the between one party and another but it's much more than that an intercessor yeah. is one who pleads the case for one to another um, yeah often often you uh, over my life, I have walked into situations where two kids are squabbling or whatever, and the mom is about to unload on one of them. And you think, okay, um, can I talk to you a second? Because, uh, okay, um, you know, you, what you just missed here is the is the other one instigating this and causing the trouble, and then you walked in on the back end. Oh, okay. Well, what does an intercessor do? exactly this he wishes that he can hear the heart of the other person such that they such that 
that you could walk in their steps, so to speak. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm a lot more I'm a lot more sensitive to cancer survivors and cancer sufferers than I was before cancer. I'm a lot more sensitive to it because I understand. And in fact, um, when Dana Farber does their kids show or uh, St. Jude does theirs, I can't watch because mm -hmm. I know what these kids are suffering. And, and yeah. because of that, I I have an instant connection with, with cancer sufferers. Sure. So uh, that's not bragging. That's just telling you that my, my uh, life focus has been radically changed since cancer. Now, I wish I'd never had it. Don't get me wrong, but my mm -hmm. life focus has changed because of that wicked disease. Sure. As you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Now, sometimes this is difficult for us because how how do you know what they wish? How do you know how do you know how they think? And so, one of the parts of and I'm glad you started with the word empathy, Rich. Um, mm -hmm. One of the ways to know what their heart is is to listen to them. Very, very yeah. soon, you'll find what their driving force is. Very, very soon, you'll find out what's what motivates them. And then, and then from that perspective, you can have a connection with them that lets you fulfill 31. Because often in cultures, we have different we have different insights as to what the culture is expecting in the in the uh, Chinese culture, when Becky was there, uh, she found out that if you go to somebody's house and you bring three pieces of fruit, when they come to your house, they will bring back three pieces of fruit, not the same fruit, but the same, but a balance, um, so that you don't shame each other from from wanting to do this but but the culture says you can only do this and so yep. as you wish that others would do to you do so to them and so becky had brought this huge she was teaching so so in china they teach english and some of the english teachers have never been to america so they understand the fundamentals of language but not the culture and all so much of what we say is culture driven. Um, so these were people who understood English, but didn't understand the culture. And so in this place that Becky was working, they taught them the American culture as well as the word. They all understood English, but so Becky had a big table talk, um, Dr. Seuss books that she was reading on the plane or whatever. And once you've read Dr. Seuss 10 or 12 or 15 times, you pretty well have it memorized. And she gave it to one of her students. Well, this is an enormous gift. This is an unbelievably uh, important and radiant gift. And the, the woman had to figure out how to give Becky back something of the same. And Becky didn't care if she got anything back, but in the woman's culture. So she made Becky three handmade bracelets. And Becky was thrilled. And, and when the young woman gave them to Becky, they she was really in fear and trepidation that this was not going to be um, as much as good a gift as she just got. And so, and, and there was no way that Becky would have understood that if she did not. And that way she fulfilled and she let the woman fulfill verse 31 here. As you wish others would do, do so mm -hmm. to them. If she did not, if she had said, no, I don't want that, it would have been an incredible shame upon the woman and it would never have, and their relationship would have radically changed. So, mm -hmm. so to do verse 31 is first not what you would, it's not often what you would instinctively and intuitively do in American culture. You just have to hear what they're about and and then then you can, then, then, then you can, the, the Chinese call it saving face. That yep. you don't shame the other person by giving them right as yeah. you wish that others would do for you, do also to them. Yeah, we should see uh, see in this the uh, the Lord the second great command of the Lord: That's love right. your neighbor as yourself. 
That's just right. open, you know, to love, you know, to get in that, that frame. Uh, it starts with self-love. You got to have a sense of self-love, not, uh, not self-aggrandizement, not self, um, you know, right. ego to, to the max, but just have oh. a sense of, of uh, rightness about yourself and uh, have that as your springboard, so to speak, to uh, how you want to interact with others to extend that love and uh, and thereby essentially uh, fulfill what Jesus is talking about here. And I think I think that springs from the first commandment. When you love God yeah, sure. with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, it changes who you are. <clears throat> who That's you right. Are you get self love from that. Yeah. If God I'm loves not. you so much that he'd put on human flesh and die for you, who are you to love yourself any less? <laughs> That's right. And and how and how important how yeah. important the cross is to who I am. Sure. <laughs> how important the love of God is to who I am. Um, right. The self self worth is defined right there. That's right. And so uh, let's try this in. Can you flip to message for this? Uh, not easily. I'm on my TV. Uh, it'd okay. take me minutes to get there. <laughs> okay, let's try it in Amplified. Let's read those verses in Amplified. Verse Amplified. 27. Okay, let me get to it's that. On my screen. You got it? Oh, okay. Uh, verse 27. Yep. On your screen. Uh, but I say to you uh, who hear me and pay attention to my words, love that is unselfishly seek the best or the highest good for your enemies. Make it a practice to do good to those who hate you. Bless and show kindness to those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever strikes you on the cheek, offer him the other one also. Simply ignore insignificant insults or losses and do not bother to retaliate. Maintain your dignity. Your dignity. There it is. Uh, Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who seeks of you, uh, who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. Amen. Only so love amazing. Those. Yeah. So amazing the uh, the power of these words and how kind of they're a life gauge. God, yeah. am I living? And and any time that somebody comes up to you and says, I'm doing everything that God wants, you can take a breath because are they are they living this out? And there's there's some people on the planet that are at a place where they can live <laughs> where they can live out the second commandment abundantly, but it's really rare. Yeah. We are, we are all works in progress and and yeah. how blessed it is that the Lord Jesus would love us yeah. enough to do this for us yeah one of our commentators uh mentioned that um uh if everybody lived out the golden rule do unto the others as you'd have them do unto you uh the world would be paradise yeah <laughs> just That's like right. that but uh that i i gotta i i gotta believe he meant that in the context of the new nature Amen. of the uh, born again nature um, because in the old nature which is essentially self selfish self-centered um mm, i it, you know yes it certainly would mitigate that but uh paradise uh paradise would come i think with uh with that that uh, embracing of agape love and practicing it amen amen lord we thank you for loving us we thank you. It's the Lord's Day. We'd ask that souls be saved, that bodies be healed, that families be restored. Bring joy, peace, and power to us, O oh Lord. And let us make commitments that are good and godly for this new year. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thanks for joining us. Amen. Enjoy the Lord's Day. Amen, right. amen. Yep. Yeah.